We have now moved on to extended access list configuration. Uh, this is the same topology as our standard access list uh, lab and what was used before in our routing. Everything is the same. No access lists have been applied. All of our routing is still up and running with eGrip right now. Uh, so when we were discussing standard access lists, they need to be applied as close to the destination as possible so that you don't block uh, traffic that you otherwise would want to allow. So if we had blocked uh, this host, 192.168.4.2, at this point, he couldn't go anywhere. If we blocked it at this point, you would be able to access the other networks, just not this one, which is what we wanted. With extended lists, they offer you greater flexibility and power to define not just the source that you want to block, but the destination. So if this traffic is coming from this host and going to this destination and on these ports, and with through these protocols, <laughs> then block it or permit it. It's very powerful. The extended ones are um, what you would expect if you were looking at a firewall rule or something like that. That these are equivalent to a standard firewall rule. So uh, they give you a, a lot of flexibility. So what we'll want to do is configure these as close to the source of the traffic as possible, since we have such uh, granular detail that we can configure. That way we're not uh, allowing traffic into the middle of our network that otherwise would be blocked and is unnecessary to go in there. So if we had, uh, if I'm going to block PC1 from accessing PC0 again, I don't want to apply it here with an extended list because then I'm using up routing resources on these two routers for no reason at all, which is the downfall to standard access lists because you're allowing this traffic to go through the routing processes on these routers and then they finally get to where it's supposed to go and then it gets dropped anyway. So with an extended list you can kill it at the source and it doesn't even have to uh, go through the routing engines and if you do so uh, on the closest interface it's even more efficient. So always put things closest on the closest side of the interface as you can uh, so it doesn't have to go through as many processes on the router and then you also with an extended list want to put it as close to the source as possible in, in general. Uh, so that you don't go through other devices in your network that are unnecessary. So we're going to go ahead and configure a uh, numbered extended access list and a named extended access list. Remember there are two for each, uh, standard and extended. Both have numbered and named versions. So we'll go ahead and create a numbered extended access list. And I'm going to do so, uh, we will block PC1 from accessing PC0 again uh, and I'll do so by, by configuring router 1 since that's closest to my source. So in order to configure a numbered extended access, access list uh, we'll do so from global config and it's going to be the same as that standard one where you start out with access list not IP access list. Uh, we'll then give it a number so remember with extended, we have that second block of numbers we need to use, so we'll have to start it at 100 for it to know that it's an extended list. Uh, after that, we then can permit or deny or make a remark if we want. Uh, and what I'm going to do is instead of using the deny all that's at the bottom of each access list, uh, I'm going to deny that one host and then I'm going to permit the rest of that network. So only PC1 can't talk to PC0 but the rest of that 4.0 network on the left can do whatever they want. So that's what I'm going to try to accomplish here. So what we're going to do is deny and then you can choose a protocol. So now you can get very specific. You can say all IP traffic, only TCP, only UDP, only ICMP. You can get very uh, specific into what kind of traffic you want to block. Uh, what I'm going to do is just say ICMP because we're just doing pings right now, but uh, the good good possibility you'd probably use IP because that'll block everything. So we'll do ICMP and we're going to do host because you can either define an address or just use the phrase host. So I'm going to do block 4.2 and then I have to define my destination. So where am I going to? So I'm going to say host again and we're going to go to 192.168.2.2. So I'm going to say deny any ICMP packets, which is ping, from 4.2 to 2.2. .2. It's then going to ask you what kind. 
and if we had defined uh, TCP instead of ICMP over here it would then ask you well what port numbers and then you could type in uh, a port number or something like that in this case it says well what kind uh, I can either say echo echo reply ICMP packets or I can just say everything uh, by doing a carriage return so we're just going to block all ICMP alright so then we're going to permit the rest of the network so we're going to do the same command permit ICMP from 4.0 and now I have to give that wildcard mask because I'm defining the entire network and we're going to go to we'll say any because then if we say any then that will allow the rest of this network the rest of this network to do ICMP anywhere they want including this host so we'll just say sure ICMP everywhere is fine take a look at our entry here so we're denying our host to our host for ICMP and then everyone else is allowed to do whatever they want with ICMP so that looks good so we'll apply that to this interface which is 0 slash 1 and we'll do so using that IP access group uh, function IP access group 100 remember and I'm going to do that inbound on this interface and we'll give it a shot there we go we are blocked so it's working as expected and then if we were to do the same command and turn it off give it a second and there we go everything is working so that works as we thought so let's go and make a named access list an extended named so we'll get out to global config and we're gonna go into IP access list this time remember when you do named ones you have to go into IP access list and we're going to say what kind do we want we're gonna do an extended this time and then we're gonna give it a name so I'm gonna be boring and say test again so now we're in the extended named access list config and we can now do those commands again for permit deny whatever we want to do so I'm going to make uh, the same thing. So we're going to deny ICMP host 2.2 and we are going to host 684.2 we'll leave it at that but then I'll permit everyone else in the network even though there is no one on the network <laughs> uh, we'll do 68 I did that last one backwards. Someone should yell to me. <laughs> I'm coming from four and I'm going to two. So I'm going from left to right, and that's my fault. Alright. So now we're going to permit ICMP 192.168.4.0 for the rest of this to any. So any as in anywhere. And if we do show access list, okay, that looks okay now. And we will go back to our interface, which was a one, and we'll apply it there. So IP access group. We're gonna use the name, so I named it test and inbound. We'll give it a shot look at that we're blocked again and then what we can do is show access list you can see it had four matches there for four pings do it again four more pings and now it's eight matches so we know it's working you can see that uh, so that's a nice way of noticing it with uh, by looking at that count that increments uh, and again the standard uh, show commands will work for these just as well and we can also uh, do the sequence numbers just like the standard lists so if you go into config mode and we go into IP access list extended test 
we can say, uh, if you look at this, we have the 1020 again. So I could say uh, 15 deny IP host 192.168.4.2 to host 192.168.2.2. And then you can uh, give us some additional info, or we can just say for everything. And to show access list. And now you can see it got inserted in the middle. So that works just the uh, same as it did before.